Now I guess you've all come here about uh, seeing this Salisbury axle in this Malawi 110 and putting it back together again. Um, I had a bit of a thing and I got the video and I did this with it and I threw it out kaput because it was just a pain. It was Good Friday yesterday and it was anything but good putting this, axle, putting this differential back together and I'll tell you why. I don't want to show you something that is going to be so super complicated that uh, you'd be put off or you'd be crying to me and saying well Mike you did this and you did that but you didn't show me how to do the other <clears throat> and I don't want to do that. You see I've got this axle in the car now I suppose a lot of people have played around with them in the car but believe me it is a pain it is an absolute struggle to get the settings right. Now <clears throat> even in the Land Rover book and I checked the Series 3 and the Defender book the very first thing it says is remove axle and now I could see why. You see sometimes in workshop manuals they say things that you don't really need to do but uh, in this instance yes take the axle out. Why? Because it's a hell of a job trying to work it out whilst the uh, differential is in and you're working on a vertical plane. Uh, let me explain. You see, it was the setting up of the pinion that was the problem, or trying to verify the pinion that there was the problem. Now I'm going to put a picture up now, and I'm just going to hold this up now for reference for me to show you which one it was. But what was happening was that I had my height gauge set correctly, and how I did that was with a, a, a block, a piece of cylinder head down here, look, you see down here, I had a piece of cylinder head, I got my height gauge, and I put it onto there like this, and we set it to zero, right? Not a problem. The problem was, when you're working with this, like, horizontal, like this, not only is it a bugger to see the, the readings under the car, but the magnet on this was so strong, every time it stuck to the pinion, it was shifting ever so slightly the reading. And I realise now why they say take the axle out. Because if we go back to this picture here, you can see that they've got a height gauge set up. In fact, wait a minute, here, this is a better picture. Oh, here. Look at that one. See? See that one? I won't bother putting it. You, know, you can read that, can't you? See, there's the height gauge and there's the setup. But this isn't magnetic. This is just a block that rests on top of the pinion. Now, that's why it's best to do it vertically, you know, like so to turn the axle so that the casings open at the top. The mag mount was just like I said, was sticking to the end of the pinion and shifting every time you did it. So I, I must have did it about 20 times and I was getting really fed up with it because I couldn't work out which was which. And what you've got to remember too, going back to this picture here, that the pinion, where is it now, here, is not in the centre of the diff, it's, it's to one side. So you had to keep taking it off and adjusting it to do the other side, if you see what I mean. So you'd measure one bearing carrier and switch it to do the other side. Now with a magnet, every time you move the damn thing, it would clonk and it would stick on there and it would shift, out, shift all your settings. It's most frustrating. So that was one problem. Uh, so what did I do? Well, I put the pinion in. And I, I did it like it says in the book, take off, don't put the, uh, the, the sleeve in, like this thing, don't put this in. Set it up, put the tension onto it, so the pinion doesn't move. Fine, that was great. They said once you've calculated the height for the carrier, then you could put this sleeve in and crush it down and put the, uh, oh well, assemble it with the oil seal and the flinger and the flange and that's where my problem started. If you recall, I bought a new flange in a kit. Except, what was happening was, when you were trying to set it up and set the preload on it, this was catching 
the nose of the differential. If you look very, very carefully, you can see when I was turning it, how it was putting a scratch around here. No big deal. So I put it in the press and I pressed it so it was narrower and it was still catching. Now I was getting a bit fed up at this time. <laughs> so what I did was I put the old pinion back on, which somebody had actually been had replaced at some point. And the bearings, the surface here for the seal was perfect. So I put the old one back on. And then I started to collapse the new spacer. Now, believe me, that tool I made here to hold the flange on was invaluable. You can see where I've modified it a bit because I put two bolts through here because I couldn't quite get them tightened up. But that was not the problem. You could jam this against the chassis. But even using this breaker bar, it was still hard to compress that nut. Believe me. I, I was struggling under that car and I had a tube on the end of this and I was sat in my little chair swinging away. And I, it, you really have, a, I think it was about 250 pounds to, to uh, compress it. And this is a warning because this little spacer, once you start to compress it, you just have to move your uh, socket and bar ever so slightly. I mean, we're talking, you know, you're, you're moving like this, stop, check, a little bit more, stop and check. Because The difficulty was the friction where the oil seal goes on here was kind of tight. So when you were using a spring balance off the holes, it didn't mean much at all. So what I was doing, it seems as if I've made an awful lot of work for myself, was I put this back on, and this is why I put some bolts on, and I bolted this to here. And what I was doing, because this is like a two foot bar, and once I got some tension on it, I, I, I could move it, I was moving it and trying to rock it up and down a little bit. And just do it the old-fashioned way and find out when the player's gone. And believe me, you turn it a little bit at a time. You don't go raving it round, just a little bit at a time. It is so time-consuming. So that was out. That was, that was the start of my problems. So I got that done. I was struggling to try to get the height gauge. And then I thought, sod it. Just, just this is going all wrong. I knew that the differential hadn't been, uh, well, it had been played with. Somebody put a new bearing in the front end and a new pinion and bits and pieces like that. But um, it had the original seal uh, bearings in, original shims. Everything seemed to be okay. So I just put the diff in. Now, again, this is why it's easier to do it on the horizontal. Because if ever you've had a diff out, you will know that is bloody heavy. So putting it down, if you're going to drop it straight down like this into the casing, easy peasy. Doing it on the horizontal, you know, trying to lift it up and put it in, not so easy. That's why this little tool I made here, which is a copy of the uh, uh, Churchill tool, was invaluable. Now, when I first used it, somebody said, you know, you, you've stretched the casings, it's knackered nonsense. I still had to stretch the casings just a little bit to drop the diff in. Only half a turn. I mean, what we're talking about is one turn like that. That's it. That's all you need. Once the slack's taken up, just a little bit, and it, and it dropped in. So that was a necessary tool, because otherwise you'd be struggling. So I put it all back together again. The preload on the pinion was good. And then I measured the backlash of the gears. Here. See? I did this. Perfect. And then I did this. I measured the backlash on the tooth. So I hold the pinion, the hold, hold the pinion flange tight and turn the crown wheel to see the height on the height on the gauge. And it was supposed to be uh, 0.15 to 0.27 uh, millimeters backlash, and this was 0.2, so we were within range, so that was good. Now I'm going to show you this later, but just to verify 
everything was fine, I used some of this marking compound. But I can't get bloody lid off now. Here, this stuff. Brush it on about three or four teeth, and then spin over the gears. Ratchet, you know, ratchet it round, turn it, turn it, turn it, until you see the contact path pattern. Now I'll do a photograph and I'll install I'll put it here. Uh, and the tooth pattern was beautiful. It was nothing wrong with it. So I was quite I was happy with that. I was happy at that. Uh, let me just just be, just before I go on, why did I take all the pinion out and things like this? Well, it was reported there was an oil seal in it, and of course the pin, somebody had done the oil seal and tightened it up so tight you couldn't even turn the flange. It was so tight, so I stripped it down to see the condition of the bearings. They were fine. We were lucky, so that's that's the reason why I did it. But anyway, once I did that, I put the flanges, you know, the the drive shafts back in with new, new drive shafts, new flanges and it still clonked and I, then I thought, I, I know what's wrong with it it's the, um, the it's either the thrust washers or the gears in the, in the carrier itself there's a sun and planet wheels inside there and it goes a bit like this I wonder if I can move the camera and I'll let you listen perhaps this is a better view uh, and, and you can hear the gears moving can you see them moving? But you see the crown wheel's hardly moving. So that's where the clunking's coming from. The, the tooth pattern is kind of nice. You see all the way around there? It's, it's a nice pattern. I have no worries with that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to leave it. You see, as I mentioned before, burning through hours on this and we're almost out of budget anyway so I'm going to put it back together inform the customer what's wrong and um, then we can take it from there to do the the sun and planet gears isn't too bad actually now we know that all the shims and everything's like that set up we just have to remove the diff again and change the gears now I know what you're going to say you can put new thrust washers in there but if I took it out and it wasn't that why did they sell a kit all complete with gears and thrust washers, which is almost like a hundred quid? Uh, I don't know. Can we live with that? Well, I think so. But I'm satisfied that the backlash is good, the contact is good, but the differentials, it's just going to be noisy. You live with that, couldn't you? It's a lot better than it was. Like I say, the flanges, the shafts and the flanges are brand new. So... I don't think it's that, and I, I noticed there was no play on the spline, so that was good. But it's still a bit clunky. So what's the moral of this? Well, like I said at the beginning, even in the Land Rover book, it says, remove the axle. Believe me, it is so much easier. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to box all this lot up, and depends what the customer says, I'll box it up. Um, but I have an axle. I have a Salisbury axle on top of one of the containers outside. Unfortunately, it's a bit too difficult to get to. But in springtime, when all this snow's gone, what I intend to do is get that axle, strip it down, sandblast it, paint it, and we're going to put it on the bench, and we're going to set it up by the book. We're not going to use a mag mount, because for the simple reason, we can just hold the tool here, we can use, use your finger just to push it down to, to measure the, the settings. Oh, oh, this is a better picture. So we can use your finger to push down here to measure the settings, if you see what I mean. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it like that. Like I say, I'm just so out of my happy spot by showing you how to do something that if, if I find it complicated, you'll find it complicated too. Now I know people have done them like this on the car, but it isn't it ain't easy. <laughs> Believe me, it isn't easy. I mean, if you were just removing the diff to replace those sun and planet gears, then yes, okay. But I've got a sneaking feeling that I didn't pick that up when the, 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 um, it was on the bench because I, I, I didn't have any shafts at the time to put into the diff and turn it whilst it was on the bench. 
I think what I've done is I've found a couple of old shafts that I can cut down and put some handles on, you know, so you can turn it to find out if there's play in the diff. I didn't expect it. I must admit, I didn't expect it. Now, going back to saying, should I put, should I put shims in? You know, not shims, but uh, new thrust washers in and things like this and take a chance. Thrust washers are about 60 pence each. They're not much. But like I say, what, by, by the time you buy the gear kit with the washers and stuff like this, this gets expensive. I don't know. If it was mine, I would have pulled it out and put new, new, a new kit in it. But it isn't. And, and again, we don't know until it gets on the road how, how it's going to be. It might be all right. Once it's got oil in it and things like this, I don't know. But like I say, if I'm going to show you do, to do something, I want you to feel happy in, in, in your happy space as well. I know, I know there's, there's professional mechanics and there's amateur mechanics watch this, and I don't want an amateur mechanic doing what I did and buggering your axle up. It's just not worth it, you know? So that's why I scrubbed the videos. You know, went on for hours. <laughs> But what's, what's the point of watching something that's struggling on? And also, my hair wasn't right. I was unhappy about that. So there we go. That's, that's, that's the reason why I'm not doing the rest of this video. So, sorry about that. That's the way it goes. Budget constraints, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. We, I'm happy as it is. Let's call it a day on that. All right? See you later. <laughs>